Hey guys, in today's video, I wanna talk about the top to bottom kinetic chain on the forehand. And this is quite contrary to what's commonly taught because most tennis coaches will teach the opposite. They teach that the kinetic chain starts from the ground up. It starts from the legs, it goes into the hips, then goes into the torso, into the shoulders, and then finally transferring into the arm and the wrist. Now what I teach is the complete opposite. Basically, the kinetic chain starts with your eyes. You're gonna be tracking the ball, and then the hands start the movement on the forehand. And I already made a video about the kinetic chain that you can check out on my YouTube channel. I went into detail on how to perform the kinetic chain. If you wanna go even in more depth, you can sign up for Intuitive Tennis Premium where I talk in more detail on how to perform the kinetic chain on the forehand. And if you wanna go into the ultimate deep analysis of the forehand and you wanna learn it step by step, you can buy the intuitive forehand course where you will not only learn the kinetic chain, but everything that encompasses the complex stroke that is the forehand. And I received many DMs, many emails from tennis coaches all around the world that adapted my methodology and they started teaching the top to bottom kinetic chain to their students and they were amazed at the results. It simply made sense to these coaches. They never liked the idea of the forehand starting from the ground up, hitting the forehand with the legs. It didn't make sense to them. That's what they wrote to me. It was always somewhat weird that a forehand is supposed to work this way. And once they watched my initial video on the kinetic chain, it was like a light bulb moment. All of a sudden everything made sense. They adapted this method, started teaching it to their students, and the results were phenomenal, not only for the coaches, but for the students themselves. Many of you guys who are watching adapted my version of the kinetic chain, and you saw amazing results. But not only that, but also a simplicity in which a forehand is performed. It made absolute sense that that's how a forehand works. You don't hit any tennis ball with your feet you hit it with your hand. Now the racket is connected to the hand, of course, but the mental image of hitting with your hand makes a lot more sense than the mental image of hitting with your legs. And by focusing on the eyes and the hands, that is the best way to visualize how tennis is actually played. Now let me show you a couple of instances where professional players actually do generate the stroke from the ground up. In other words, the first thing that happens is the legs pushing against the ground. And you do see this from time to time on players like Kyrgios, Monfils, or even back in the day, Marat Safin and Marcelo Rios. And it is the jumping forehand. On the jumping forehand, yes, players are gonna jump first, and that is gonna be the first link in the chain, and then everything else will follow later. Let me try to demonstrate that. So you're gonna jump first. <laughs> I can't even do it. Let me try it again. This is a tricky thing to do. So you're gonna jump first and then everything else is gonna come later. That is a jumping forehand, and that is indeed a shot that was initiated with the legs. Now let me try one more. I'm gonna to try to do a little better job and get higher in the air, okay. I'm getting old, guys. I can't get much clearance, but you see what I mean. On that type of forehand, yes, you are going to jump first, and everything else that happens on the forehand is gonna follow later, and that is truly a forehand that is generated from the ground up. And guys, the reason why a lot of coaches are proponents of the leg drive on the forehand because it does make sense. Why? Because you see elite level tennis players, high level tennis players, or even high level juniors get airborne. So it makes sense that when players are getting airborne that there is some kind of a push being generated off the ground and that indeed is a jumping forehand. But anybody that has played tennis at the high level will tell you that you never jump on the forehand. This is something it's a conscious decision to perform a jumping forehand like the terrible one that I just demonstrated. That is a conscious thought. When you don't think about your legs and you play tennis at a high level, you are indeed not driving with your legs. The only way a high level forehand works if the eyes and the hands are the first links in the chain. Now the context that is missing when coaches analyze high level forehands or elite level forehands is the incoming ball. And the incoming ball matters a lot in how the forehand is going to be performed. So obviously, if we're talking about the ATP Tour, there's a tremendous amount of spin and the ball is bouncing very high. What you will see, however, is that players still make contact somewhere between their waist and 
their chest area. This is the optimal contact on the ATP Tour. And players manage to make contact in this zone on the vast majority of their forehands. Now, how do they do that? When the ball is higher, well, they straighten their body. So you will see that players will become airborne as a result of adjusting to their desired contact point. If they didn't do that, they will indeed strike the ball too high and this will have a negative effect on their forehand. And I'm gonna show you what happens to the feet when players strike a forehand. So you, what you will see is that the back foot will usually be behind the front foot. And now when the feet leave the ground, you don't see a violent push off the ground where the players are exploding upwards. You will see this on a jumping forehand a la Gael Monfils. What you will see on players like Nadal, Djokovic, Federer, Murray is that the feet passively leave the ground. So the body starts to straighten. You will see the feet passively leave the ground where the tips of the shoes are still on the ground and then the feet passively dangle in the air. This is how players are getting airborne on the forehand. They are not violently jumping up. They are leaving the ground as a result of the entire kinetic chain working in conjunction with a straightening of the body and that violent action makes them leap off the ground passively. Now you ask yourself, Nick, why are you so sure that they are not actively jumping? Well, I know how to play tennis and I know that I leave the ground on my forehand all the time when I hit it hard, especially on a higher ball. And I am not constantly jumping, but yet I am leaving the ground and my feet are passively dangling in the air as well. And when I study professional players, and especially elite level players, I can see the same type of movements because fundamentally this is what happens to everyone when the fundamentals are present. When the kinetic chain is executed from top to bottom in conjunction with a straightening of the body to a, adjust to a higher ball, this violent acceleration of the entire system will make players leave the ground. When players leave the ground, it is not an active jump. The feet are passively dangling in the air. Why? Because players are not constantly jumping. They are being propelled off the ground by the acceleration of the whole system. Now here's the important thing that you need to understand is that not every ball is going to be high. Some balls are going to be waist height and players will not leave the ground. Also, some balls are going to be below the waist and players will stay low. You'll see this a lot on the WTA Tour where balls tend to be a little bit flatter. So you cannot say that on those balls players are not executing the kinetic chain that's supposed to start from the ground up. No, the kinetic chain is always present on every single forehand. What players are doing, they are adjusting their body to the incoming ball, specifically to the height of the incoming ball, and they're either gonna stay down when the ball is low, when the ball is waist tight, they are gonna straighten a little bit, and when the ball is much higher, they are gonna have to become airborne to make an optimal contact point. And another super important thing that you have to understand is the following. You will rarely have a situation when you're playing a match where you're gonna be truly set. The vast majority of your forehands are gonna be hit on the run. You're gonna be moved in all kinds of directions, whether you're going laterally this way or this way, maybe running around your backhand, whether you're going forward or backward, you will rarely be set like you are, for example, when you're warming up. And therein lies the danger when you're studying forehands, when players are warming up, they're in a stationary position. This rarely happens in a match. So what will often happen is the following. When players are truly hitting the ball on the run, they will execute their kinetic chain while the feet are still moving. In other words, they will not get a chance to set their feet. They will truly hit the ball on the run. So in those scenarios, it's obvious that the kinetic chain is not starting from the ground up. It is truly starting from the top down. And this brings me to the next point, which is that the feet are the most important thing on every ground stroke. Obviously, if you don't put yourself in the perfect position, you're not gonna be able to hit the shot properly. Your technique is gonna become irrelevant. Also, you're gonna have to have a good balance when you strike any shot, but especially the forehand. So those things are absolutely true. The feet are the most important thing on the forehand or on any other shot in tennis. But when we're talking about starting the stroke from the feet, 
obviously when we're on the run the stroke is not starting from the feet the feet are adjusting to the ball finding the ball but the stroke starts from the top and most importantly and this is something that's very easy to see when you study the best players in the world is the late setup now if you want to know how timing works on the forehand you can check out my video on that subject it's a great video it got more than half a million views and i can give you a brief synopsis of this video what happens at the high level is that players wait to initiate the stroke so they can have a more continuous swing and a faster swing but another thing that happens when players wait is that they keep setting up for a long time prior to actually setting their feet so we're not talking about hitting the balls truly on the wrong way talking about situations where players are actually setting their feet this will happen quite frequently so what you need to understand is that the setting of the feet meaning when both feet are planted into the ground this will happen deep inside the stroke meaning when that racket is already in a drop phase this is when players will set So obviously, when we're talking about the beginning of the kinetic chain when the stroke starts, it's obviously not starting when the racket's already here. This means that the stroke has already started, the kinetic chain has already started prior to the player setting their feet. Now you take a look at any high level player, take a look at any elite level player, you will see that what I'm saying is absolute hardcore fact. Players will set their stroke, not only on the forehand by the way, on any shot, deep inside the stroke somewhere in the racket drop area this is where either this foot is going to set or this foot is going to set this will happen deep in the stroke which means that the kinetic chain has already started prior to the feet setting Now, a lot of you guys in my comments on Instagram especially like to talk about firing the hip. This is something that's very popular, firing the hip as some kind of an initiator to the stroke. But I'm here to tell you this is complete nonsense. That right hip on right-handed players will always be behind the left hip. I can prove it to you. Why? Because when you take a look at high-level forehands, 90% of forehands are going to be struck where the back foot is going to be behind the front foot and another 9% of forehands are going to be struck where that front foot is going to be in front of the body this way. So we're basically talking about either a semi-open stance forehand or a closed stance forehand. The last 1% are going to be circumstances that are truly emergency situations where maybe the right foot is going to come in front like this when players are reaching for the ball. This leg, the dominant leg getting in front on the forehand is something that happens less than 1% of the time. The vast majority of the times that back leg is gonna be behind the front leg whether we're talking about closed stance or semi open stance or even fully open stance now what you need to understand is that players will remain in this position take a look at Federer take a look at Djokovic take a look at Nadal when they hit their forehand what you will see is that the non-dominant leg will go up into the air and now they're going to go through their kinetic chain which starts from the top the hands start to separate now the racket starts to go back when that racket starts to drop, the shoulders start to rotate, the left hand starts pulling out of the way, so that when we hit the forward phase of the stroke, the chest is gonna be pointed towards the incoming ball. And now players start initiating that back hip and they drive it forward towards the ball. And when they make contact, the dominant shoulder is in front, but the position of the feet doesn't change. The back foot will remain behind the front foot. And often this front foot will be even in the air because what happens when players load the balance is distributed so that more body weight is towards the hitting side of the body and when players accelerate that non-dominant foot gets off the ground and it remains there why because naturally players are executing a kinetic chain that goes from the top to down the hips are not firing the right hip always stays behind the left hip and at the very end of the stroke when we're talking about the finish here now the entire body starts to rotate and that back hip comes through and we got the chest pointing towards the other side fence.
And look, I know this is deep technical analysis, but this is based on hardcore facts. Everyone hits the forehand in this way. You take a look at all the legends of the game. You can go even back to the old school players that hit open stands. Players like Becker, Sampras, Agassi. And we're talking about the modern players like Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, or the next gen players that all hit it the same way. Because that is the only way you can hit a forehand. If you would indeed drive the legs first and then fire your hip, you would open yourself way too early. Now, people believe that firing the hip will somehow propel the arm to go forward. This will not happen, guys. In my first Kinetic Chain video, I explained in great detail that the arm will not move by itself. Every stroke in tennis is a conscious movement of the arm. The arm will not fly on its own. We have to make the arm move a certain way. I'm not only talking about the hitting arm, I'm also talking about the non-hitting arm. You are consciously adjusting the position of your hands and your arms. And you're also consciously rotating the body. All this stuff happens consciously. What, what happens with the rest of the body is a natural thing. It is what I call an accommodation to the swing path. And let me explain that in a little more detail. It does happen naturally on most players, but it doesn't on some players, especially at the recreational level. So if you have trouble with accommodating your swing path, which should be a circular swing path, because naturally what happens on the kinetic chain is that you are initiating the rotation prior to the forward phase, and the rotation is gonna continue all the way to the end, which naturally results in a circular swing path. So when we're talking about a circular swing path on the forehand, the rest of the body must accommodate this swing path. So let's take an example of a close stance forehand. We're gonna execute kinetic chain. And now naturally at the end of the stroke, that back leg is gonna come around to accommodate the swing path. If we're talking about the forehand that you see most at the high level, where the back foot is behind the front foot, this is called open stance, semi-open stance if you wanna be more specific. And what you will see here most frequently is that players will execute their kinetic chain. This leg will go up into the air. And now this leg will pull back a little bit to accommodate this swing pad, this is true when there's a lot of penetration coming from the other side, which you will see most of the time on the ATP Tour. But when players have a little bit more time or maybe they want to be a little bit more aggressive, you will sometimes see that back leg coming through a little bit. And why does it do that? Again, the movements of the feet, they come at the very end of the stroke, well after the contact has already happened, and it's done to accommodate the swing path. So guys, forget the idea of driving your legs, initiating the forehand with your legs. It doesn't work. It's a very complicated process. And when players try this out, and I've seen players try this out, they can't even do it because it doesn't make any sense. The confusion lies in the fact that players are leaving the ground. Now don't confuse this with the jumping forehand. It is a thing. And I don't want you to try this either because it's more of a show shot. It doesn't really have any purpose. When players attempt to do this, they're doing it for show. They're doing it to get attention, and I don't want you to execute any shot where you're jumping, including the serve, by the way. But we're gonna get to that in another video. And when it comes to the kinetic chain, take the information that I presented in today's video, take the information that I presented in my other kinetic chain video. If you wanna go more in depth, buy my products that I have available, and you're gonna learn the thing that makes the most sense is that the forehand starts with the eyes and the hands and then continues to the rest of the body.